Hi, this is David with the Discount Dragon, and today we are going to show you what we're doing with uh, some larger press molds and uh, doing different things with a press molded polymer clay item. So, this is the original. This is a vampire skull fragment, and that's what the original polymer clay piece looks like. So what we're going to be doing with these is we're going to be mounting them in different ways uh, to sell in our Etsy shop. So one of the ways that we finished this off is we took, uh, well let me show, the, show you the press mold first. This is the press mold that we made from this item. So it originally fit in there like that. And then you also have a hard shell. This one is made out of Durham's rock hard putty, so it nests very easily in there, and once you're done baking it, you just pop it out like that, and then you carefully work around the edges to get the piece out. So this is the uh, the uh, amazing sil silicone mold putty inner piece, and this is the outer piece made out of uh, Durham's rock hard water putty, kind of a plaster compound. It's used for spackling and various other projects. So, uh, this we have the original, we have this, it's an open face mold, so you can do things with the back of it. In this case, this is the first one I got out of the mold, uh, I very carefully pressed the uh, Fimo in there. I used Fimo Soft and uh, some Fimo Effect. Um, so these are the ones I'd probably recommend for doing a large press mold. So Fimo Soft, uh, Sculpey Souffle, and the Fimo Effect clays. Now, that's just personal taste, but I like something that I can take and just press in there and keep pressing in there until I work out all the air bubbles, and I'm pretty sure that I've put enough force on it to pick up all of the surface detail. So you want to avoid distortion and, you know, you know get it to work. So, this is the first one. And on the back, in addition to, like, pressing the clay in there, uh, I added this piece, which I just hand formed. It's kind of a little bracket. I painted it a little bit to look li like it's kind of like a metal bracket. And what it does is it goes on this, and I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> I got it at a thrift store and cut it down, and now it's going to be a display stand. So this goes into the hole that I drilled in this. I believe the technical word for that is doohickey or Ah, thingamajig. doohickey. So it turns into a little decorative stand. And I, uh, you know, I was showing off the pictures. I said, maybe I'll just display it like this. Maybe I'll put it in a dome. And people were saying, dome! So I like, okay, go to the <laughs> dome. So this is the dome that I'm going to be using for this one. It's got a brass base, and this is going to be covered with velvet or something like that. It's going to go like this, and I'll probably glue it down. And then we've got the glass dome. Ooh. And we'll be doing a video on domes and display cases at some point, uh, because I do have a few tips on how to scrounge them up, how to make them, uh, stuff like that. So this is kind of what the finished piece will look like in this case. We've got the vampire skull specimen. There will probably be like a little plaque that says the uh, scientific name for vampire, something like uh, vampire sapiens or homo vampiris or something <laughs> like that. So that is the first way I'm going to be mounting those. Now, another way I finished these off, this one I made out of uh, Fimo Effect, and in this case I used Glow in the Dark Fimo, and it uh, glows pretty well once you turn the lights out. I'm not going to do it for this video because we just don't have the <laughs> sense of enough camera. Uh, and then I wanted to mount it differently, so on the back, what I did was I used other colors of Fimo, and I built up the eye socket using uh, wire reinforcing and extra Fimo, of course. And this one in here, this has wire reinforcing in it too to make it stable. So I built up this kind of bracket thing with three prongs, and those are actually going to be punched through a cardboard backing. So it's going to be held like this, and mounted in a frame, probably something like that. So it will be uh, kind of semi-floating there, 
against a uh, backing, probably velvet or distressed leather or something like that. And then underneath I'll probably put a little plaque once again saying this is the, where this came from, that it's a vampire skull fragment, blah blah blah. So that is what I'm doing with this guy. I'm possibly going to do one other thing at present, and that is make a different mold and cast some of these out of pewter, which will make it much less breakable, and then you can just have it sitting around on your desk, maybe use it as a paperweight, or for various other things where a more durable product is needed. Uh, I, I may also just make them out of polymer clay and uh, finish them that way, because some people may not want to spend the price, uh, spend the uh, uh, money on the pewter version, which will be a little more pricey. Uh, but they may not want a mounted one. They may just want something they can play with themselves or use as a prop for a low-budget film, or who knows. I was just thinking of vampire fidget spinner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm thinking about the spinning, <laughs> fidgeting, and the spinning and stuff, and not not for this guy, but uh, maybe a different. I don't know. Maybe get into that. Uh, but for now, it's like you can like spin it, and eventually it's like oh, I'm spinning it, oh, and then you're a vampire. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so that is the vampire skull fragment. The things we're doing with it at present, and kind of how you make it. Uh, we have other videos that, ex that demonstrate how to make the silicone molds and how to make the plaster shells. Um, I don't know if I've really given an in-depth one on how to squish all the clay in there, but I've done it to some extent. And we'll be doing more tutorial videos as we go along. So that is our artifact display of the day. The Vampire Skull Fragment. Not cursed at all. <laughs> okay, so we'll see you next time.